Hi folks, this is Jason. Hope everybody's okay. It's good to see you. Love to everybody there uh, on Zwima 100. Hope everybody's okay. And just sharing you three bits of information today. The first information is my Cass Cassie, my dog, has not been well. Uh, she suddenly collapsed today and couldn't walk and it's been a bit of a crisis and uh, we're going to be we've got an appointment to take her into um, the vet tomorrow at two o'clock so if you could be thinking about her and uh, we don't know what's wrong with her um, and uh, we're a bit upset about it so if you could be thinking about us in prayer that'd be really good the second thing is that because of that I had to cancel the school summer school of theology um, because I, I've, we've just been in uh, a bit of a turmoil um, so I couldn't do the sermons um, so I'm sorry if uh, people have been disappointed if you are interested in the messages they will be uploaded tomorrow sometime perhaps in the morning um, if you're interested it's principally for servants of God if you want to be a missionary a pastor a preacher or, or serving the local church these talks will be really helpful helpful to you and um, the third bit of information I want to share with you uh, and this will go on for a little bit longer now it's um, about pastoral care I want to read a verse 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 2 shepherd the flocks of God among you exercising oversight not under compulsion but voluntary according to the will of God and not for sordid gain but with eagerness Um, I just want to say that I really feel that pastoral care has declined terribly. Um, it really has declined. I don't think pastoral care is being exercised very well today within churches and church leadership. I'm saying that as a person who's been involved in pastoral care and a person who looks on uh, to other people who are practicing pastoral care or supposedly practicing pastoral care um, I just put this I've been listening to these lectures by called Ly, by Lyle if you could listen to this Lyle Dorset the history of the care of souls at the CS Lewis Institute the history of the care of souls uh, by Lyle Dorset four lectures um, at CS Lewis Institute I'll put a link under this video you must if you have any aspirations to leadership or if you're in leadership of any kind whether you're a Sunday school worker uh, a youth worker a pastor a missionary or you're a young Christian who might like to serve the Lord you must watch these videos because they're an eye-opener of telling you the basic biblical principles of what it is to do pastoral care um, so Lyle Dorset his name is I'll put a link to the videos now so what was the problem well first of all I think the problem of of pastoral visitation I, I really do feel this and, and I've seen it everywhere pastors are not visiting the people if you're a pastor you need to be visiting your people regularly you need to be busy visiting them even if you've got a pastoral team you still need to be visiting your people it means a lot to people if you visit you need to be visiting the young converts to making sure that they're okay you need to be uh, visiting those who are sick in hospital you need to be visiting people it should be as a pastor it should be normal for you to go and visit people and I'm finding that well I have found and I am finding that that a lot of pastors have abandoned this 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 responsibility they don't follow people up who get converted they don't visit them uh, they'll baptize in, baptize them and and uh, and that's about it but they won't shepherd the flock and, 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 and make sure that the people who've been baptized and nurtured properly and visited and encouraged you know um, if a baby is born you don't leave the baby on its own you nurture the baby you feed the baby and if someone becomes a Christian you don't leave the Christian on their own you've got to go and nurture them and encourage them 
So I feel that there is a lack of pastoral visitation by the pastors. And then the second thing um, that I feel is there's a lack of feeding. I really believe this with all my heart. Honestly, I really, really think that things are desperate. I feel that the church of God is not getting fed the word of God. I really, really do. Um, I just think that there are a few churches that are offering expository Bible teaching where you can actually go and get solidly fed. A lot of it's entertainment. A lot of it's aimed at the children or it's entertainment. It's kiddified or it's for children. But there's, there's very little good quality expository preaching around today and I would say if you're a pastor that's retired and you're an expository preacher you need to get back into the ministry you need to get back into preaching because there's a dearth of expository preachers you know um, so I'm, I'm saying that there's a need to follow up people and visit people there's a need to feed people and and there's a few things that the church has forgot as well. One is, we've forgotten, this is coming on to uh, Lyle Dorset's lectures. In fact, we'll listen to him just for a second. What elements of soul care are present? Which ones have been perverted? What's been added on? What's Wrapping it up in Matthew's Gospel. You want to be intimate with Jesus? You want to come in? I... I and I think this is a good longing. Many people say, I want something more. I want more of the Holy Spirit. I've had students say to me, I used to teach a course on the Holy Spirit in ministry. Students would show up and say, we weren't even sure there was a Holy Spirit. And they're very serious because they had been in environments where it was almost Bible deism. God has given them a Bible and now he's out of here. And they're saying, We've heard there's a Holy Spirit. Would you tell us about him? I want to I want to enter into a relationship that's very vital, very intimate, very living. And eventually I get to the point if you want to, then start obeying the, the Great Commission. You don't have to go to forty two conferences. You don't have to be a Christian surfer, surfing for, you know, looking for the high wave at the next meeting and spending all your time and all your resources traveling to conferences. You got to get off the mountaintop and be with him, doing what he's called you to do, and so that they'll bring glory to him, because it's his glory that's at stake here. The chosen people need to live in a different way. They need to bring glory to God, so that the pagans will come up to them and say, "Why do you guys have it together?" Oh, so that then when the little ones the family went to church, they knew who they were worshiping and had some sense of what's going on. The power of the, of the Ten Commandments are huge. I remember one year I was at, uh, I was at the Bodleian Library. So that's uh, Lyle Dorsey. Oh, he's a lovely guy. You've got to listen to him. He's, a, he's the old school. You might not agree with some of it. Some of it. He's a, I'm, I'm from the Reformed tradition. He, he's more uh, a, li a teeny little bit charismatic. But I love the guy, he's awesome. He's really, really awesome. Old school, man of God, man of the word, man of the spirit. I love the guy. And his lectures on the history of the care of souls is, I tell you what, is second to none. And I tell you what, those lectures need to be, every pastor, every preacher, everybody needs to listen to those lectures. And some of the old lessons that we've learned, so for, uh, that we forgot, one is how the Lord dealt with people. He didn't deal with people in a standard way. He dealt with people as an individual. And the lecturer there talks about Oswald Chambers who had the idea of you listen to God and you listen to the person before you speak to the person. So before you minister to somebody you meet in church, listen to what God's telling you about that person and then listen to the person. So you've got to listen and hear too often we try to have our ideas of how we should tell that person what they need to hear. Uh, if we're caring for people pastorally and they say that they've got this problem or that problem, 
so often pastors and, and, and all of us can put that person in our box and say well that's who they are this is what they need to hear and we've got we've got the uh, answer and it's an answer that we can give everybody but <laughs> each individual person is is uh, unique and you've got to listen to their problems and and then work out what their real need is in that situation I mean obviously their need is Jesus the need is the Lord but how can you communicate the best way uh, the Lord to that person you're only going to learn that if you listen to that person and you allow the Holy Spirit to guide you uh, to understand that person's need so that's one little lesson that we've forgotten today today we're, we're more interested in numbers we get thousands of people in church and we want to get them down the aisle and get them baptized and then we get them on a program but Jesus dealt with individ people as individuals he spent time with people individual individually to get to know them you know and it's not about numbers for the Lord it's about the individual and caring for the individual so you know as churches we shouldn't be bothered about numbers we should just be caring about the individual um, you know that's just another exa one example the other th example that he, he talks about is the um, he asked there was a survey done of L people who were in the 60s who were Christian and, and they were asked what was the fundamental difference uh, in when they were children to to today in church and they said the difference is, is today there's more entertainment and in their day when they were younger there was more Bible teaching and I feel that that the church um, the modern church is is going more and more into entertainment um, it's dumbing down the services it's becoming more it's, it's more about the children it's more about what the kids want it's more about entertaining no one wants to grow up in the meat of the word everyone wants to stay on milk and um, I feel that this is going to be dangerous because <coughs> what's happening is more and more young people are leading the church um, because everybody who is not young is made to feel like they have not much to offer and it, it's about entertainment so it's the young people that provide the modern worship and and so the church leadership becomes a lot younger and in a way you think oh yeah great young people but if there are if 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 the church isn't working and here's the key as a whole body of family where every age group is important then the church is going to go on, on, on a dangerous track because you need the elderly people and the young people to be working together you need all ages everybody should feel welcome within a church young middle-aged elderly all should be a team together and I feel this 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 move towards uh, culture uh, this this move towards um, uh, entertainment and uh, thinking of children in the service all the time is, is is making the church more more for kids and young people and forgetting that the church is about everybody and and the elderly those who are over a certain age are just as significant in their own way in their own right and I feel that that is neglected <clears throat> and I feel there's a serious problem there I know that people say well yeah but the church is becoming vibrant but there's going to be a train wreck at the end there's going to be a, in the next 10 years we're going to see a lot of churches fall by the wayside on this model and the reason is is because a these childish type services don't attract men men don't go to these kind of services where it's all about the kids the youth services me, young men will go to that and men, men will go to that but there's no older people who the younger ones can learn from and you need wisdom so there's a problem there so you know this guy um, Dorset tells a story of 
of his son asked him how did you his son's like a, a teacher how did you teach me how do you drive dad and he and Dorset said well I, I drive with my hand on the wheel and one hand off I shouldn't do but that's how I drive he says that's how I drive dad and then he said dad how do you think the teenagers at my school drive he says I don't know he said they, they drive really sort of uh, not responsible he said and and he said how do you think they learn that dad he said I don't know he said they learn it from other teenagers and there's a lesson there you know if, if young people are just learning from young people and that's all there is in the leadership of these new churches that are modernized and it's all vibrant young worship then they've not got all the people to learn from and they've not got that wisdom and they will go off the rails eventually they will go off the rails so the church should be a family where there's something for everybody there should be meat in the service when you're preaching the word there should be meat for the people but then there should be milk for the kids but there should be meat and the milk in the service something for the kids something for the young people but something for the adults and we're all together as a family and that way it things stay healthy um, the other thing is is the strength of the family as a family unit um, in days of reformation the family was key to a good strong church and spiritual renewal as fathers fathers should be taking the role of teaching their family the word of God and I feel that this has been neglected I feel that this has been lost you don't want to ram your kids with the Bible so much that they get fed up at you but in a, in a wise loving way as a father and as a mother there should be the bringing in of godly influence within the home and Bible teaching to the kids and as a family unit and I feel that this is just fallen by the wayside and if it's fallen by the wayside the church is never going to be strong because it's not got strong families and uh, it, this never hit me until I listened to the lecture of this guy so I, I know I've waffled on but I, I, I feel that I just feel deep down I'm seeing it all over the place pastors are not visiting people they're just most of them there are some but many many pastors are just not visiting the people they're sat in front of the computer or whatever they're doing but they're not visiting the people and people are not getting fed there's there's a famine of the word of God uh, if you're a young Christian and you're not getting fed spiritually then go on this channel you'll get lots of meat on this channel go on the seminary website you'll get lots of meat if you need someone to teach you the Bible just Skype me at jason.burns107 and I'll give you private Bible teaching if you need nurturing spiritually um, jason.burns107 um, no capital letters no capital letters in that jason.burns107 if you need bible teaching just Skype me and I'll encourage you but get to a local church where you'll get fed and where the pastor cares ok so those are my thoughts so I hope that if you're a pastor, a preacher a christian worker raise your game and start visiting people and start feeding them, encouraging them in the word of God. Thanks for listening. Sorry to waffle. God bless.